Hey everybody, what's up? Startup Survival here, and I want to talk to you about one of my favorite Victorinox Swiss Army knives, and that is the Spartan. Uh, I've probably bought more of these than any other Swiss Army knife. Not probably, definitely. Because you can see three of them ahead of you right now. Um, out of the total I have in my possession, that makes up half of them. I've got three other Swiss Army knives right now, but uh, half my collection basically that I have in hand are Spartans. And that's because I think it's such a perfect overall Swiss Army knife. As far as tool set, size, weight, all that good stuff. Um, you can certainly get Swiss Army knives that have a lesser tool set and therefore a lesser weight. And, and then they're more appropriate for something like keychain carry. This of course is the Cadet. Um, it's both thinner and lighter than the Spartan, uh, but it has less tools. You can see on the back of it, there's no tools whatsoever. Um, I think it's very nicely suited for urban sort of EDC keychain carry. I have carried a Spartan on my keychain before, but I do prefer that for that sort of uh, type of use. The other thing you can get is something like a Huntsman, which is thicker um, and contains a larger tool set. Inside you've got a saw, you've got scissors, uh, and then I think basically it's the same tool other than that with a few minor variances. But uh, scissors and saw are very nice to have, but again, that's too thick to carry on a keychain in my experience. In fact, I don't think I've ever carried this knife. Uh, where I see this being particularly useful is like in a bug out kit or sort of an EDC kit or something like that, where it's uh, tucked away in a bag and you just break it out when you need it. Uh, and then of course, uh, something larger like a, uh, a Leatherman Wave multi-tool, uh, you know, it has even more capabilities because it has the pliers, internal tools, external tools. It's not a review of this, of course, but um, the Spartan is somewhere in between this and, and that keychain tool, the Cadet, uh, or, or even a classic or something like that, a much smaller sort of easy to carry tool. This is more an everyday tool that is still practical to use, is what I would say. The other thing that's really cool is um, the variations you can get, obviously. Uh, in front of you, you can see red translucent, black, and uh, BDU camo. Um, these two I got in Mexico, actually, and without getting extremely boring. Um, I got this in Mexico City on uh, Christmas Eve, I think, two years ago. So almost literally two years ago to the day. Um, this one I got in uh, another city called San Cristobal de las Casas. It's uh, a really beautiful colonial city up in the mountains uh, down south. Um, but when I'm in Mexico, that's, a, that's another thing too about Victorinox is you can sort of buy them all over the world and uh, they're universally recognizable as a, a gentleman's tool, uh, not a threatening object. Uh, you know, I, I love uh, folding knives as much as the next person and you know, here's a Delica obviously, uh, one of my favorite knives. But this may not be allowed in certain countries because it locks or because of the length of the blade, who knows, whatever. It's one-handed opening, yada, yada, yada. There are restrictions on folding knives. Uh, and not everybody is going to recognize this as a tool. Uh, a lot of people may consider this to be a weapon. But nobody's going to have that misconception about Swiss Army knives. Uh, I wouldn't try to bring it on a plane or anything like that with me, but internationally they're sold all over the world. Uh, I believe you can buy these all over Europe, you can buy them obviously in Mexico, United States, Canada, everywhere. So they're universally recognized as a useful sort of non-threatening tool. Um, and that's of course because the none of the tools lock on it. It's, uh, it's a slip joint tool of course. So it's firm enough that uh, with a very minor amount of uh, negative pressure on their negative force, uh, it's not going to fold very easily, but it will fold. Um, so you got to be careful in the way that you use it. It's not a dedicated folding knife with a lock. Um, but with that said, let's get into the tool set a little bit here. Of course, you can see the main blade. Um, I think it's a useful blade shape. It's a spear point, full flat ground. Uh, not too sure about what the blade steel is. It just says stainless steel on it. Um, but in my experience for occasional use, it's more than adequate. Um, Swiss Army knives ha generally have very good rust resistance. I've never had an issue, gotten the wet many times, taken them camping, used them in the city, whatever. Um, they've held up extremely well. The durability is pretty spectacular, um, except for sort of cosmetic scratches. I don't know if you'll be able to see them on this if I tilt it the right way or not, but uh, the red translucent especially uh, was very pristine when I first got it and I've dropped it on the ground a few times because uh, uh, I was carrying it on my keychain and uh, it did get a bit scuffed up. The black one on the other hand has held up well. Um, unless you sort of tilt it in the light, you can see some wear and tear there but nothing serious. Uh, they do wear quite well actually. 
Uh, I haven't carried this one yet. I just got this recently, uh, more more or less for review, but also to throw into my collection. Uh, I just love that camouflage pattern. I'm not sure I'm going to carry this one since I already have multiple Spartans I can carry. This might just be for collection purposes only. But anyways, uh, the main blade. Uh, I, I think that's the most popular tool, obviously, from this knife. Uh, the most useful part for me anyways. And uh, yeah, I think it works pretty well. So along with that, you do have a number of other tools. Uh, since we're on the subject of blades, here is a secondary blade. Um, I think that I read somewhere the blade steel on this is not as high quality as the main blade. Uh, it's intended as a backup, and I think that's what we will typically use it for. Uh, most people who are going to cut something are going to use the main blade, and they're probably never ever going to use this one. But uh, it's a good backup, just in case that main blade gets dull. Uh, you got a couple more tools here. Uh, this is, of course, the uh, bottle opener, cap lifter, uh, and the blade down here can be used as a flathead screwdriver. And I think that this is a wire stripper, but I've, I'm not an electrician. I've never felt the need to use that. Um, I think it's almost a gimmick with Swiss Army knives and tools that they say there's so many tools built in, and then they put like little things like that that are useless to the majority of people, or you know they put a flat edge on something, and oh, you know that's another tool. It's a screwdriver. Uh, well, you know what? I can think of even one more use for this. It could be used for some light prying tasks like taking off the lid of a paint can or something like that. Uh, so I do think it is a pretty useful tool, but at the end of the day, come on, it's just a flat piece of metal, right? Um, so anyways, uh, I've used this a few times to open some beers or uh, open uh, Coke bottles when I'm down in Mexico. I really like to drink the glass Coke bottles and uh, it's good for that, of course. So that is that. Here is the uh, the ring here that could be used on your keys, uh, pretty cool. And then the other um, tool here is the can opener. Uh, I like this much better actually than the Leatherman can opener and I don't know if I'll be able to do this for you without knocking everything flying or not, but let me see if I can find it so I'll demonstrate the difference. So there you go. Um, this is the can opener on the Leatherman and it also serves as a bottle opener. Uh, what I find is that this like destroys the uh, the top of the you know that metallic cap or whatever on the bottles uh, when you when you use it. Uh, I don't like this design as much. I've had uh, discussions going back and forth with friends about which one is better or worse, but I prefer the Victorinox anyways. Um, you know, also on the end here is another little flat portion for smaller flathead screws, I guess. Um, and that's pretty much all that that tool does. Um, but I've used that enough times. I've used it uh, to open cans just uh, t so that I know how to do it. Um, but obviously a dedicated can opener is probably preferred. Much easier to use. On the back of the knife, you've got a corkscrew. Uh, we must remember that uh, Victorinox is a European design from Switzerland. Uh, lots of European countries, it's popular and culturally acceptable to, to drink wine. Uh, I'm a wine drinker too, um, but I find most of the time uh, modern wine bottles that I buy anyways are twist, twist off caps, but uh, it's always good to have a wine opener with you, I think, that that can come in useful. Um, it's not the same as a traditional corkscrew. You just kind of have to drill into it, and then you just uh, sort of exert some pressure and pop it out, you know? Uh, but it's, it's a useful tool. The other thing that I was thinking about, uh, and I know this is kind of crazy, but... Uh, you know, obviously this is not a tactical tool because none of the blades lock, but uh, I think that if you put this in between your fingers like this, and if you like punch somebody with it or something like that, obviously it's going to have an impact. Um, so just, you know, I, I wouldn't recommend doing that or anything, but uh, if you have no other options, I mean, just to show you that a Swiss Army knife or anything for that matter can be used for a violent purpose if, if one so chooses. The uh, last tool here, uh, which could probably be used similarly, um, is an awl, um, and I guess this is used for punching holes in uh, tough material like leather, um, and also it's got a hole that you can uh, thread something through so you can sew with it. Um, I've never sort of had to use that tool for anything. Uh, I might have used it once to punch a hole in something, I can't remember now, but uh, I think I did it just to see if it would work, but um, I find that to be a pretty useless tool, honestly. Uh, I would prefer to have like scissors or a saw or something in the back, but this is more like a half tool. Like I think saw and scissors basically take up like the whole row, almost like the main blade. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I can't really think of anything better that would go in that little space there. Uh, maybe another screwdriver or something like that, but I never use this tool. Um, it seems kind of old fashioned. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. 
Um, on the outside, of course, in case you don't already know this, um, you got some tweezers in here, uh, which I think are pretty cool for if you ever have like a splinter or something like that, you can use it to, uh, to remove that. Uh, and I have actually used tweezers a number of times. They, they are a nice little tool to have, and you don't even think about them actually being stuck away in there. Um, I, I honestly think I owned a Swiss Army knife, my first one, for a long time. I didn't realize that it had either a toothpick or tweezers in it um, I, until, you know, I'd, I'd had it for a while. But, uh, yeah, toothpick, I don't know what you're going to use that for. I mean, pick your teeth or whatever, but I don't know who picks their teeth with, like, a reusable plastic toothpick. It, they, that seems like an old-fashioned tool, very much like the all... Um, something I don't use very often, but it, it's nice to have in there anyways. So, um, yeah, that is the Spartan, and I mean, uh, I love it. I think it's a great little tool. Um, I also think it's the best overall Swiss Army knife in terms of the size and, you know, tool set and all that good stuff. Um, you know, I'll show you a couple other ones that I have in my collection right now. Um, you know, here is the, I want to call this the camper or perhaps the hiker, I don't know. Um, it's very similar to the Spartan. Uh, I think it's actually identical, except that it has a saw blade, which, uh, like I said, takes up that full extra layer. So this is this is thicker than the than the Spartan. It's got an extra layer in there, and I believe that's you know just there for the saw. Um, and I like having a saw. Um, that's pretty cool for when you're going to be doing something in the wilderness. And this saw works really well. Um, it's good at uh, doing fire steel, and it's also good for sawing wood, obviously. I've used this a lot. I've been very impressed with it, actually. But, like I said, that's a, that's a wilderness tool. This is more of an urban tool, a, a gentleman's tool, I guess. Um, and, you know, I'll show you the Huntsman, of course, which is uh, thicker still. Um, you know, this is uh, three layers. This is four layers. Um, and this is two layers. So you can see the size difference there. Um, what, you, what you get instead with, uh, with the Huntsman is, of course, you get the saw. Uh, but you also get, if I can find it, the scissors. So I, I, I just thought that was like such a cool combination of saw and scissors on a Swiss Army knife. But like I said, this one is too big to carry around, honestly. Um, it's more of a bug out kit or I'm going to go camping and I really want all those extra tools and I can take the weight. But for sort of uh, EDC, I think that the Spartan is where it's at. Um, these are not the only ones I have. Uh, I also gave a blue translucent one to, to my wife. And I think she also got another one from a friend that was from Switzerland. So uh, people all over the world have these knives. I'm sure there's been millions and millions sold. Uh, Victorinox is an awesome company and they make such cool looking products that you just want to collect more and more of them. Um, I don't see myself buying a ton more in the near future, but you never know. Thanks for watching.